episode four, A New Hope. So this movie basically starts off right after Rogue One. Mm-hmm. Um, they've gotten onto a uh, ship to capture uh, Princess Leia. Um, it pretty much just cuts right into the action just there. Which, yeah, I like that yeah. too. It, it, out of context, it feels like we missed something. Like, was I late to the movie? But I think that works. I think that's... It makes up for the, you know, reading a couple paragraphs at the beginning. Yeah. And I think that's pretty much the best you can do with that sort of type of movie that had never really been seen before. Yeah, and this was this predates, like, the summer blockbuster formula and the slasher film formula. I think what you're describing is, in a more traditional film, it would have started with Luke. Like, all of his scenes would have just come first. Him on Tatooine, fucking, hey, I'm a moisture farmer, my uncle's a fucking idiot. Who yeah. bought the same droid twice? He doesn't even look that different. Three C three PO. Anyway, but yeah, that. Um, now they call it like a hook, uh, a, a cold open. But yeah, I think this was like the infancy of that. Starting with yeah, Darth Vader fucking coming onto the the ship. What did you guys? What what stuck out the most to you guys? Um, I would probably have to say um, how well the uh, special effects still live up to like today's standards, I think. And did you I watch disagree. the original version or did, did you watch the remastered version? Well, I guess I watched the traditional version. I don't know. I, I think they still look pretty decent. Like, But uh, apparently uh, you guys disagree. Yeah, I watched the remastered version with the CGI... Uh, Job of the Hut, and uh... I don't re- I don't know what the whole debate is with the whole like Han and Greedo thing. Like, is it like who shot first, or is it who pulled first? Like, what is what is the question? It's who shot first? In who shot first? Like, so who shot in a, first? apparently, yeah. yeah. But why does apparently it matter? In the, because it sh- it it either inspires sympathy in Han Solo, showing that he has the best reflexes, or it just makes him a cold blooded killer. Because I could understand like who draws first because of like you know the whole like cowboy coat. To me, it's the whole cowboy thing. You know, cowboys the good guy mm-hmm. always has to like draw faster than the bad guy and shoot first. Yeah, like so. And that's, that's a that's, 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 that's uh, <laughs> So I never understood like <laughs> the question. I was like, do you not understand duels? That's a good point that you bring up that uh, that this movie is essentially a western, and I think that's interesting a dynamic that it brings to the the whole storyline because really there isn't too much of a science fiction trope to it although it is set in sentence based and all but uh yeah it definitely brings up a different dynamic yeah and it's also even got some samurai movie stuff true with the Jedi might be why like this culmination of things might be why it appealed to so many different people it's traditional in a sense that will I think uh, be able to be marketed to like an older audience and uh, just uh, modern enough to uh, captivate uh, more modern audiences as well yeah but the, the problem I agree with you but the problem I had when watching this is I couldn't separate how much it's been ripped off and satirized. True. When watching it, like I watch it and I just I, I think of a Family Guy joke, or I think of one of the sequels, or I think of oh yeah, remember when um, some other movie referenced this? Like I'll never be able to be somebody in 1976 watching it for the first time. So, I have a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Does it ruin the, quote, romance of the film knowing the legacy of Star Wars between Luke and Leia? I don't even really see that much of a, like, that much of a connection between them in the first movie. 
Like, yeah, you know, I, I agree with you. After watching it, she just kind of kisses him on the cheek and like, gives yeah, it's him, like, like oh, some winky yeah, faces. Okay. Yeah, it was just like, yeah. it was more like thank you. Um, <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah, there was no like chemistry to it, so I really don't see like all the hubbub yeah, on that one. And I noticed that Han Solo hates garbage. Like, he hates um, garbage. Yeah, the band. He hates garbage. <laughs> <laughs> they they uh, they transcend all time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Big barely landed in the trash compactor, and Han was already like just bitching, just like, "Oh my god, like I can't believe we're in a trash compactor." Blah 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 blah. And it's like you guys are just literally being shot at. I just felt like it was a bit of an overreaction, <laughs> considering they got out of the you know danger of imminent death. Well, maybe that's just the thing with Harrison Ford. I mean, like, uh, his character in Indiana Jones, he starts bitching about there being a, a snake <laughs> in his seat. Yeah. You might be onto something. I mean, going with that whole, like, actress trope thing, like how we yeah. know, uh, like, Tom Cruise runs in every movie. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's Harrison's <laughs> thing. You know, Harrison likes to bitch and moan in every movie. Now I'm trying to think, what is Deckard bitch about in Blade Runner? It's been a while since I've seen that. I think even in uh, the Expendable movies, I think he's bitching about it. I think that's, yeah, that's Harrison Ford. Yeah, and in, and in um, The Fugitive, he bitches and moans about it not killing his wife. Yeah. And then Tommy Lee Jones is like, I don't fucking care, dick. No, we're just gonna have to like watch every Harrison Ford movie and just pick up on all these like. Well, I mean, the, it's just one of those things we can reward. Moments. Like when we notice it, we'll just go forward uh, with that knowledge, you know, because because <laughs> we, we we that's just another thing we've added. We know Tom Cruise is a runner. We know Harrison Ford is a complainer, and we know Chris yeah. Pratt likes to diffuse situations by dancing to music. Yeah, and um, uh, what's his name? Tom Hanks likes to urinate. So what did you guys think of the costume design and uh, production design of the sets uh, A New Hope? I really liked the sets. Like, I, th- I don't know how much mm-hmm. of it was... Like, I don't know how much of that sky was CG or, or if it was real, but it was, like, a lot of those still shots were just, like, plain beautiful. Well, I think they did go on location for some of these places. I know they did, uh, like, a lot of the desert scenes, like... In actual desert. Yeah. Going to the actual locations, not, not like having like a set, definitely adds to being immersed into this world. And I think that A New Hope specifically um, is on a, in, a, in a league all of its own. Mm-hmm. Like even people will say Empire Strikes Back is better, but I'm not going to lie to you guys, every time I try to watch that movie, I fall asleep. <laughs> every single time yeah and I don't know if it's just because movies have gotten so exciting these days and I'm just used to a certain thing but like I appreciated the beauty of this movie but the first time I watched it I did fall asleep and like I've watched it three times now you can see how I'm still struggling to talk about it <laughs> like I, it was, it's a good movie but I mean it's just just by today's Flash and Shazam and you know like Razzle Dazzle yeah. Like it's just kind of uh, slow and steady. Which is good. A lot of people have have said that A New Hope is like textbook example of a three-act structure. We also have to point out the fact that Star Wars is not a 100% original concept. It's influenced by a lot of different things. To be fair, for, for any aspiring writer... Like, it's like, you're, no idea is original, only your execution is. I was sort of confused as to how um, a lowly bantha farmer... <laughs> He's a moisture a farmer. ...a hotshot pilot <clears throat> in the Rebel Alliance. Like, it took... It took the... Like, it, they didn't even trust Jin. <laughs> Jin, <laughs> Jin was like a rebel fighter. <laughs> but this, like, farmer guy from Tatooine... So what'd you guys think about the ending of the film? Um, I thought it was bullshit. 
it does kind of uh, wrap um, a bow around it neatly there. I feel like all of the people who are constantly losing these so-called Star Wars are losing because they're celebrating before the fucking war is over. <laughs> they're constantly throwing celebrations instead of continuing with their assault and getting they gotta the upper boost hand morale up, man. And 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 maybe gaining some. So tell me, the, Kim the Kim what? How does a war end in Star Wars? Because in the first film, it was just like we got to take out the Death Star, and they did. So why wouldn't you celebrate? But I, I, my, I do like it. My original question is less about the chronology and more of as a film itself. How do you think this film, the ending? in isolation compares to the rest of the film's endings. Like, I feel this is the only film in the series that just ends. Everything else has to kind of be a cliffhanger. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess, yeah, in isolation, like, it would be its own, its best standalone movie. But, like, it was, I think it was intended to be that, you know. Yeah, so is that a, because this is so back now my day question before, is before you could get like a three movie contract, you know what I mean? Like, like I don't know true. if Lucas knew necessarily yeah. that he was even going to be able to make episode five. Well, I don't so know, man. Abbott and Costello game. hung out with Wolfman, Frankenstein, and Dracula in three different movies. So if Abbott and Costello could do it, but yeah, he brings up a a point there as far as like not really able to see the. Uh, the future in this because I, I think they had originally um, wanted uh, Leia to be with Luke but then they saw that uh, the audiences liked uh, Han Solo better so they uh, they changed the uh, I guess the uh, the future of her uh, relationship yeah to, but I, uh, I mean all the, all the groundwork was still there I think what you were saying earlier is Luke and Leia, their chemistry just wasn't there, whereas Leia and Han's chemistry was there. Yeah. Like the, the bickering, like that's common now in romances. So I, the reason why I brought the ending up is I, I wanted your guys' thoughts on, because now Hollywood seems to has, have franchise fever, do you think it's hurting the film, the art of screenplay, the art of screenwriting, having franchise frenzy it depends like i mean there there are the movies you're talking about where it does like kind of end on like a deliberate cliffhangers but then there's the other movies where it's like it is a standalone film but then they still have that scene that's like leaving it open for more and i think that's always been a thing even before the whole like franchise thing because but, but see, the a difference for a filmmaker to make money, you know what I mean? Like, right, no, I get that, but I'm, but I'm talking specifically the screenplay, because if you took, like, let's take one of the best franchises of all time, the Harry Potter films. I only see the last two movies as being wholly dependent on each other. I think you've been up a, a good point there, but uh, it's uh, I think it's a different dynamic between Star Wars and let's say like the Marvel universe, because this is Star Wars in itself is more of a contained story, and then what they're doing with Marvel, it's there's different characters with their own story arcs, and then it also gets kind of into like alternate realities yeah, and yeah just... right because like that is that is the whole intention of this whole mcu thing was because we we liked it when we would see a spider-man movie but like anyone who reads the comics knows that it's so integrated nowadays mm-hmm. that like that's that's what we want to see on screen and so that's what they're trying to reflect now are they doing the best job probably not necessarily but it is it is a step in the right direction I don't think we should dissuade it. Is it a good is it good for screenwriting to write one movie that has to fit as a jigsaw puzzle into all these other movies, or is it better to just write a single standalone movie? A movie that should be able to stand on its own two feet? That's my as, question. As a screenwriter, it's best to write something 
that stands on its own two feet. I Why? Believe. Because, Why? because as a screenwriter, that's that's your job is to just focus on the movie. Like now, the executive producer, that's if it was part of a franchise, that's their job. You know, like if we were to compare MCU, it's like Kevin Feige, that's his job. You know, Taiki yeah. Waititi, the director of Thor Ragnarok, he may make Thor Ragnarok, but Kevin Feige, when he looks at Thor Ragnarok, is going to be like, okay, I need you to throw in uh, fucking Doctor <laughs> Strange right here, and then and then we'll be golden, and that's our fucking MCU reference. So is that it? <laughs> uh, I think so. I don't think we have really anything else to say. Um, that was the show.